Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Channel 781 News Debrief. Uh, this week, we're covering two weeks of city council meetings. We'll also be talking about the Moody Street Forum uh, that went on last week that I thought uh, was very interesting. We're also going to cover the announcement that Jonathan Paz is running for mayor. Um, we'll get uh, takes from that. Um, but also, we're going to be talking a little bit about an article uh, from The Justice, the Brandeis newspaper, uh, ironically, that we just talked about last week in our show. Um, going over the Rhino Lounge in Waltham. And uh, and so joining us this week is uh, Noah Rison. Hi, everybody. My name is Noah. Uh, and as always, Josh Castor. Hello. And James Kirkelly. Hello, everyone. And so I'm going to give it over to Josh. We're going to talk about uh, the justice first. Um, so Josh, please take it away. Yeah, I'm happy to have Noah here. I think this was a really cool article that came out next week, uh, this week um, in the Brandeis student newspaper, The Justice. Um, it was about the Rhino Lounge, which for those who don't know is a restaurant in Waltham um, that uh, is seen as kind of a hub for the African community in the area. And uh, it was a nice feature of the restaurant and its, its manager, but it also included um, some follow-up on a controversial video that was posted to the Waltham Reddit a few months ago. And it revealed that after that video was posted, there were some calls to the mayor and there was actually um, a change to a decision uh, that the licensing commission had made. So before I say too much about it, why don't I pass it off to you, Noah? Can you tell us more about um, the story in general and also the, the video and the follow-up to the video? Yeah, hi everybody. So we we actually discovered the video from the same place. I'm a frequenter of the Waltham subreddit because I live here. I want to know what's happening. And so when I watched it and I saw the comments on it, I was like, this is ridiculous. And this sounds seems really racist. What are these guys up to? And so at a justice meeting with Cayenne, the features editor, I sort of pitched the story. She really liked it. And then when she watched the video, she was like, yeah, I want to work on this story with you because this is just a real like disservice of justice. This seems really interesting and also a little bit weird. And then my roommate, friend, fellow justice writer, Ariella, also hopped in. So we had a really good team from the start sort of attacking it from multiple angles. And we, uh, the first thing we did is we actually visited the Rhino Lounge because I was the only one who had been there before. And we just found like this lovely welcoming atmosphere there was a line dancing club um, who was practicing they were having a lot of fun and then the bartender Harold was super nice to us he was super welcoming um, and then James when we sort of made the pitch we we're like we want to do a story about the Rhino Lounge we talked to your manager um, and then James came to talk to us and he offered us uh, beef stew which was super good they comped our drinks they were just super super nice and that sort of shifted it from what it was originally going to be just about the city council reaction and a little bit about the Rhino Lounge. And that's sort of why we took such a almost business profile a look at it for about half of it because we just felt so nice and so welcomed. And then, yeah, so I worked a lot on the actual like licensing commission stuff. And then Cayenne and Ariella did a follow-up interview with James going over a bit of it a bit about the Rhino Lounge, why he started it, stuff like that, and also his interactions with Wayne Brosco, the head of the Board of Licensing. And so, yeah, it's a really neat story. I like how it came together. And we, I know it's gotten a good reaction at Brandeis. I know it's gotten, it's made a little bit of a splash in Waltham because like we, as students go there a lot, like my girlfriend sorority has their semi-formal every year. That's how I know Sarah Shapiro, who's quoted in the article. And we just really hope that more people see it as a great space to be, to hang out and really welcoming and also a safe place that's just gotten hit with some racist accusations. Thank you. Yeah, so um, you mentioned, so there was a video on Reddit that if you look at the comments, it was interesting. See, people saw very different things in that video and they had very different assumptions about what had happened before. Um, so you mentioned you saw it and said, wow, this is racist. So can you tell us more? Can you kind of summarize the video for us as how it looked from your point of view? Yeah. So one of the things I mentioned in the article, but one of the things that immediately stood out to me is the phrase you people, um, which Wayne Brosco and Kevin Ritzy used a lot when referring to the two black co-owners of the um, Rhino Lounge. And in any situation where it's um, 
a white person talking to a group of um, any marginalized group, the phrase you people is a very easy microaggression to pick up, but especially when they're sort of literally elevated, like in seats of power, talking down to people saying you people, that's just immediately stuck out to me. And also another was the phrase, I don't know if this is okay where you come from, James, which seemed very pointed, very like sort of back to Africa language. And then lastly, James's name is James. He goes by James. He doesn't go by Jimmy. And so I don't know if Wayne Brosco and him have like a good relationship, but he kept calling him Jimmy. And we were like, this seems really, really racially charged. Can you tell us a little bit more? So what? So I knew about the Reddit post before, but I didn't know there was more to the story. Can you tell us more about what happened after the Reddit post? Yeah, so after the Reddit post and after it sort of blew up, Wayne Brosco actually came, went to the Rhino Lounge and they had sort of a, handshake conversation about it because it seemed like um to everybody that they had gotten sort of taken away with the cameras or they knew that they looked bad in front of the cameras so it seemed to be that the community reaction to it um and sort of the call outs for how bad it looked really spurned them to very quickly go and say no 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 we like you we want you here we think you're a good community space and so to me that just suggests that they were sort of miming power for the camera or they let the camera get to their heads a little bit because interpersonally James has said Wayne is actually very nice and cordial. Interesting. Yeah, you said, uh, well, you kind of touched on this. What do you think, what do you think was their motivation? I, I noticed that was interesting in the story. James said he had, did have a good relationship with them in the past and they weren't, didn't always take that kind of a tone in meetings. What do you, what's your personal interpretation of what was going on in that meeting? My personal interpretation is like, I think similar to some of the Reddit commenters, a little bit of power can go to someone's head really fast. Um, and so I think that was part of it. Like we we all act different perhaps in front of cameras. And so I think that might've been a decent element of it. And also there's like been the nationwide um, like sort of focus on crime and crime narratives and things like that. Um, and so I think that has to play a healthy portion of it is, oh, we have this black business owner and there are always like reports of gunfire. So we should probably shut this down. I think that's part of it. But I think also um, it could just be a simple element of I know there's a police presence on the board, even though the officer found that nothing had happened, they're tired of going there. So I think all three of those sort of mixed together for just a bad moment caught on camera. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Um... One thing, um, so the, for those who don't know, the meeting that this video came from was specifically about an incident where somebody reported hearing a gunshot in the area of the Rhino Lounge. Um, the police came and they never found any evidence that there had in fact been a gunshot, although they did find out that there was a conflict where somebody put their hand through a window. Um, however, in the Commissioners and also some of the people who posted on Reddit seem very confident that there probably was a gunshot. And the reason was because there was a gunshot there in the past. So you actually, in your article, took a very close look at those arguments. And can you tell us a little more about that? What it, um, what, what is the evidence that there's some kind of, uh, that, that the Rhino Lounge is like a dangerous place where gunshots are likely to happen from what you found? Almost none, like other than two black men own it. And most people who work there are black. That seems to be the only evidence. And like, yes, there was a gunshot there in the past, not affiliated with the Rhino Lounge. Uh, but it's it seemed to be that they just heard something or maybe heard a car backfire, called the police. The police came and investigated and there was no evidence of anything. There wasn't a shell case. There wasn't, no one in the lounge had heard of it. But they, what they did find out is that there had been a, sort of altercation that got someone kicked out. They ended up kicking, punching a window broken, and then the altercation continued the, in the parking lot, but then quickly dissipated. And that's in the police report. That's what James said happened. But yeah, like you said, if you watch the commission meeting, it seems like there was like a definite like burst of gunfire outside the Rhino Lounge and that James didn't care. Thank you. So also, uh... 
from your perspective, you know, when, when people come to Brandeis, they don't necessarily have expectations about what the city of Waltham would be like. They, they know it's near Boston, which is a reputation as a progressive city. What do you think, um, you know, what do you think Brandeis students, if, if I can ask you to make a big generalization, how do Brandeis students see Waltham and how does what you saw in this video, uh, you know, support or, or challenge that? I think a lot of Brandeis students see Waltham as like a town that like quote unquote could be better. Like there's a stereotype that there's not a lot of things to do, but also like we all love to go to Moody Street. That's like one of the best places to go. Like um, when you, if you walk in a calf, if you walk in a common good, half the people there at any time of day, especially on the weekends are Brandeis students. If you walk in a cafe on the common, same thing. People have their birthday dinners at margaritas. People take their families to in a pickle. And so they really like that specific area. And then, like I said, there's a sorority, one of the big sororities at Brandeis. They do their semi-formal at Rhino Lounge every year. They have for six, seven years, I think James said. And so it's like a lot of, and this is touching on what you'll talk about later with Moody Street and the pedestrian thing. When it's a pedestrian like street and there are no cars there, most of the people you see walking around are Brandeis faculty or Brandeis students or a decent portion of them. So we really love the town. We might like think that there's not a super lot to do because there aren't there isn't a lot of nightlife and that's okay but like it seems like everybody's sort of like happy suburban home and if you want like if you want to drink you want to party you want to dance you can go into Boston if that's more your thing and that's okay so I think that's how a lot of Brandeis students see it is could be better but this is a really nice place to stay it's a really nice place to live and go to school and really there's no allegations or nothing I've super heard about Waltham being like dangerous or not a nice place the most dangerous things that happen to Brandeis students are the cars that drive on South Street that sort of I don't want to say routinely but that have hit students this year and in past years um, so that's where the danger comes from but for like what I saw in the video what you could see in the video that seems to touch on Boston's past history of racism um, I don't know Waltham history super well but that's what it speaks to me is it's like sort of a past outdated view of it because all the students I know think I don't want to say all a lot of students I know are like happy to disappointed with wealth I'm not scared thank you that's actually really insightful Chris and James do you have any questions for Noah um I I think you uh asked a lot of great questions uh Josh really just really thankful that the justice didn't end up writing a piece on this. Um, if you end up reading uh, the article uh, and are captivated by it, I really implore you to watch the video itself, uh, which is publicly available. Um, it's just really, if you wanna see how rotten like some of the committees yeah, yeah. in this city are, when pe people don't think uh, people are watching, it's just really, really rotten thing to do. And, and just anecdotally, um, the rhino lounge was portrayed as this like uninhabitable like dangerous place um and but rhino lounge has really been a part of the community for a really long time i know that the watch city democrats used to go there all the time there used to be a social group called drinking liberally uh that would uh, meet there as well uh and again very anecdotally but um i've been sober for almost two years now but when before that i used to uh, frequent Moody Street uh, very often, and I've frequented Rhino Lounge very often. And I'll tell you that the rowdiest and most dangerous parts of Moody Street were all white owned. They're all at white patrons, uh, just Franco's, shoppers, just every Friday, Saturday night, just crowds, just people just so drunk and just fights breaking out and cops getting called. And I never saw the owner of Shoppers and I never saw the owner of Franco's in front of the license commission having to explain any of that. And you know why that is? Because that's from the, because of the, from Waltham and uh, people from Rhino Lounge aren't. Yeah, and also very anecdotally, you can imagine that drinking happens at a sorority semi-formal. And one of my friends, he um, unfortunately had to take him to the bathroom and then at home and the Rhino Lounge staff were just so nice. They were so courteous. They helped me walk into his car. They weren't upset that he got puke all over their bathroom. I would be upset if that happened. Um, and so, and like, I think even James or maybe the co-owner like checked on us once. And so again, like this is anecdotal, but they're just the nicest, kindest people that you can find. 
Yeah, yeah. When the first time I went there, uh, you know, James came. I assume it was James. I don't know my name, but uh, the owner came out right out and just like introduced himself. It was just a bar patron, just introduced himself. Just super nice. Uh, so the so the portrayal of Rhino Lounge is this dangerous, like disgusting place. Uh, it's it's yeah. disingenuous. Just to chime in, I, I've also been there before and before the incident, and it definitely did not seem to line up with any of the portrayals that they had. And just a very nice place. So. I also remember seeing the uh, video when it first came out, and I was super happy to see this being written about it. Yeah, actually, I was excited about this, too, because it's a great example of something we've kind of touched on a lot. You know, there's all these meetings that happen in Waltham. Most of the time, there's no one from the public there. Not all of them are recorded, and when they are recorded, it would be nobody watches it. So, you know, this, it seemed like in this meeting, these guys were not very aware of the fact that they were being watched by the community. And because somebody noticed what happened, and, and because somebody decided to upload it, and then because you guys decided to follow up on it, now it's actually something we can really talk about in terms of what it what it tells us about the community. So I really appreciate that. Yeah, so that's why I really like 781 News. Um, and what y'all do because it was really really hard to find just information about like who these guys were when they got appointed like anything like that and so I'm sad that Waltham doesn't have a local paper to, but I'm happy that Justice can pick up some of the slack on that and bring some light to some of these stories thanks I was, was going to say to that end that's also why we've been trying to make an effort to go to some of the more meetings that aren't covered with video because there are still ones that happen in places that like aren't routinely televised by WCAC. So that makes it even harder to get this. Yeah, imagine yeah. what they would have said if they weren't recorded. Gross. And, and, that, and that's like another thing. If you're not constantly exposed to public scrutiny, you can get away with things like misquoting the law or misappropriating the law and saying, if the police ask you for your name, you have to give it to them. And no, you don't. <laughs> The only yeah, I meant to mention that I appreciate you guys talk to a lawyer to kind of clarify that. So yeah, because we we want it to be fair, like we didn't want to like just like bash the board of counselors. And so that's why we followed up with um a lawyer because the only thing we could find in like the Waltham, Massachusetts city code is that you have to talk to you have to give your name to an officer if you're involved in a vehicle accident, not if you're a bartender at a liquor establishment. It gets a little tricky when you are, but like you don't, there's no requirement that you talk to the police, let alone give them your name. So what my understanding is if you have a license, which the employee doesn't have the license, their boss has the license, the, the person, the license holder has a requirement to cooperate with police. But it was the, the, the idea that, that she was required, this employee was required to give her name, that was just his interpretation of what cooperate means, I guess. And that wasn't really clear from the way he explained it in the meeting. No, and like you can get into like, because you got warning is cooperate and assist, and you can get into like statutory interpretation bullshit about what those words might mean. But like, <laughs> um, you can cooperate and assist namelessly, and people do it all the time. But yeah, Wayne was asking, was basically saying, he said like ver almost verbatim, she didn't want to give her name. I don't want to give you a license. Yeah. It was just, ridiculous i want to mention the names of the other two writers too so you're noah risley and it was also cayenne landau and ariella weiss who worked on this report is that right yeah those are my yeah those are my lovely co-reporters okay and where the brandeis has been doing some good news on waltham so hopefully we'll have you or one of them back on the show at some point thanks a lot for being here i would love to thank you all so much